is a fabulous experience for me. I don't know about you guys, but I, this is, I feel very blessed and very grateful and very appreciative and you know, all of that stuff. I'm having, I've been having an awesome week just ramping up to this event. Thank God, because that whole getting sick and hating myself was, let's move to the, to the next subject. Oh, I, I circled this, which means I wanted to make sure I said it. When the what if monster is in control of our outlook, our actions and attitudes follow right along and we create our own disappointing result. Does that make sense? I'm gonna say it again. When the what if monster is in control of our outlook, because that's exactly what it is, our actions and attitudes follow right along and we create our own disappointing result. Every time. When the what if something awesome happens part shows up, then our responses, our actions, our attitudes come from there. And not only do we not create our own suffering while we're leading up to whatever it is we're working toward, but we have a wonderful experience along the way. And that's a big deal. It's a big deal. Um, so uh, the next thing I want to talk about, which will be, I mean, there is so much content in this body of work because it was a 40 day experience and the book is becoming a 40 tool thing. So there are 40 different things that are being put together in this body of work, which I am very excited about. So this is only, I mean, everything I'm sharing here could be used as a tool. But you know, these are the specific ones that I wanted to talk about today. This one is there's no such thing as a blessing in disguise. People use that term all the time. Oh, it was a blessing in disguise. There is no such thing. There's no such thing as a blessing in disguise. Blessings, blessings do not disguise themselves. They don't, they lay right out in the open, just waiting for us to want to see them. That's how it works. There's no such thing as a blessing in disguise. Let me share a couple of examples. I'm a writer, I write books. Actually, I write lots of stuff, but I write books. I started writing when I was about nine. And what I used to do, I loved it. We had, somebody gifted my, my family with uh, Encyclopedia Britannica. There were all these books with all this information. I'm nine years old, it's the summertime. I don't have school to keep my brain occupied. So I would pull out an excite, one of those volumes at random, open it at random, read the, the, um, art, the um, whatever it's called, and then I would write a report on it, the subject. I would write a report on the, whatever it was. And I loved it, it was fun. It was fun for me. My friends all thought I was a freak. But it was fun for me. I enjoyed doing it. So I, I would write that stuff as a little kid. When I was about 14, I started writing poetry. And I did a lot of journaling and just writing and writing and writing and writing and writing and writing. And writing. I was prolific during my teen years. And I married my first husband 10 days after my 17th birthday. He was abusive. Um, when I was 18, he didn't like me writing. He didn't like that I had the brains for it. He didn't like that I did it. I had, I had everything I had ever written. It was all together, I had it all together. He took every bit of it and threw it in the fireplace. Right, right. she's shaking her head. Don't you hate him? <laughs> I hated him. Um, so, broke my heart. Absolutely broke my heart. What? Took a long time. Took a long time. 
The question was, you forgave him though, didn't you? Um, took a long time. S yes, I did, but it took a long time. So, and it, took a, and it took a decision about who I wanted to be regarding that specific incident. So he threw it all in the fireplace. I set my pen down and I never wrote anything again. For 19 years, for 19 years, I didn't write anything. Because why bother? Why bother? Something's gonna happen to ruin it. I'm not even, nope, not even gonna put the effort out there. And, and I shut off that part of myself that actually enjoyed it. 19 years later, I've been in Arizona for three years. And all of a sudden, I'm sitting at Rick's son's computer <laughs> and a poem just sort of fell out of my fingertips. Uh, and it was good. And it was, you know, it was fun to read. It was fun to write. It, was, it just fell out. I sent it to my friends. Look what I just did. <laughs> and, and one of my friends sent it to her husband. And he emailed back and said, she needs to enter it in this contest. So I did. It didn't win the contest, but it got published in a book. The next one got published on page one in the next book. So, you know, I started writing again. I was a completely different person at this point. So I'm writing and, I'm, and I, you know, created the whole workshop that I used to teach in the shelters and, you know, I was writing again. Wrote my first book in 2008, wrote my second book in 2009, you know, so I'm writing again. Well, probably, probably about four, maybe five years after I wrote that poem, um, a friend of a fellow poet was having an event. He was teaching class and he asked me to come and support him because his poetry could have been mine. We had the same writing style. We used the same words. It was amazing. Um, and so he asked me to come to su and support him in this class. And I, I was driving into Phoenix. We were living in Gilbert at the time. I was driving into Phoenix and I was thinking, they're gonna ask me because they always do. They're gonna ask me when I started writing. I don't wanna tell that story anymore. I don't wanna, you know, because the whole point of telling the story before that was, don't you hate him? <laughs> don't you, don't you, I'm such a victim. Don't you hate him for making me his victim by doing that? Well, at this point, I had been saying to people for six or eight months, there's no such thing as a blessing in disguise. So here I am driving into Phoenix, and that thought occurs to me. I've been telling people for months that there's no such thing as a blessing in disguise. If I was gonna look for the blessing in this, what would I see? Immediately, the answer came. Immediately, the answer came. See, the stuff that I had written up to that point was all about what a victim I was. It was all about how bad my life was and how abused I was and, you know, love is blind, so I don't see all the things that he's doing to me, kind of bleh, stuff. That was all I wrote. The journaling was all about how, how um, unhappy I was. He did a burning ceremony for me. <laughs> I did a, you know, hello, it's a blessing. So the thing about writing is you're, when you're having a victim episode, and then you write it down, you give it more power. And the more you write about it, the more power you give it. And the more you hang on to it, the more you're not letting it go. And it festers. It festers in your energy. Mm -hmm.